Welcome to this episode of Rock TV, Richmond's own channel. I am your host, Petula Burks. Today, we are going to have some amazing conversations with representatives from the Richmond's Department of Social Services. Get everything you want to know about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it. Stay tuned. TV. Thank you for joining us today. I am excited about this conversation. We are going to be talking about the Department of Social Services and all of the things that they have to offer our residents. So we have, we're having conversations and we're going to start out with two lovely ladies um, who work in uh, various divisions in the Department of Social Services. One of the things that we realize is that the department is large um, and so there are various different divisions within the department. And so we're going to talk about that and the work that they do and the humans that they take care of on a daily basis. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. So let's just start off really generally. What division within the department do you all work in? Well, we work in the benefits department um, in social services. We service our community. Um, we provide the Medicaid program, the SNAP program. We also um, involved with the TANF program as well. Um, so that's the side that we focus on, but there's a lot of variety, a lot of different departments that um, consist of social services. I'm actually in economic support and independence, and I'm on the application side. And so what that entails is TANF applications, temporary assistance for needy families. We do Medicaid from age, blind, disabled Medicaid, long-term care, wow. families and children and Supplemental Nutrition Assistance, which is Food Stamps, SNAP okay. program. I work in ESNI, uh, which is benefit programs uh, to include determination of assistance for food stamps, which we call SNAP, uh, Medicaid, sometimes TANF, general relief, burial assistance, and the list goes on. We are part of the VIEW program, okay. which stands for VIEW Initiative um, Education and Work. Okay. Um, this program is made up of clients who are receiving TANF, which stands for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, and we are assisting them in becoming self-sufficient. Okay. And so we work with the benefit side and as well as the service side. So whatever barriers that our clients have, we have to address it and support them in the best way that we can. And since COVID, because, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about um, the fact that you've got a, a larger workload, um, but you also have the same amount of employees. Um, how has, has the work changed or even the need change that walks in the door or calls you change since COVID? What I saw in the change was um, we did lose some coworkers to yes. COVID. Wow. Yes. Um, that was very difficult. Uh, we all had some people who just left, mm -hmm. uh, did not return. Mm -hmm. We had to go home to work. That was a disadvantage because whereas someone may have a room, that can be their office. Someone may be at the kitchen table. Someone may be beside their bed. So it was not necessarily conducive to working. Um, there was no printer. There were the things that you needed. We had to really change the way that we did business. I will say going from um, the interfacing with the client on a regular basis mm -hmm. and then um, during COVID, mm -hmm. still working, but trying to find a different way um, of providing a service that for the entirety of my career mm -hmm. was done face to face. Right. Um, was very different. It was automatically all hands on deck. Um, we went from face to face seeing each other, having great communication and face to face with the clients to home. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? Do you right. need, what kind of support supplies do you need at home? Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to still communicate with your customers? How are we going to still advocate? What do we do as partners to still connect and make sure our programs continue? Right. So we adapted to that rather quickly, mm -hmm. but we also had to help our senior community to get on board with the technology changes, like sending things via picture, yes. emails, <laughs> yes. uh, of right. course, faxes. Mm -hmm. And then of course, our younger generation hopping on board to do that as well. So it was a change in the way we do services. We became 
just inundated with work and the mass amounts of work mm -hmm. caused us to move so fast that we lost the quality of our work. Uh, we were so busy pushing to get the numbers done, mm -hmm. to meet everyone's needs. Um, people almost became not as kind during that time. I don't know what the stress levels were. A lot of people were dying, yeah. a lot of their family members. Right. Trying to yes. be sensitive to the needs of people as we always are, it became extra then. So let's fast forward. We're, we're coming out of COVID mm -hmm. um, and we're reimagining what this looks like now, right? Um, what does your day-to-day -day look like in 2023? It's never a dull moment. And no day is the same, okay? You will deal with um, our clients. We have to meet them where they are. Right. Um, you have to be able to show patience mm -hmm. um, and have a sense of empathy, okay? That's the key word. If you don't have empathy, then this may not be the place for you. You all are human beings first. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're trying to help other human beings who at some point are in a crisis situation yes. and it doesn't do anyone any good to come in and yell and scream sure. or call and call people names because mm -hmm. you still have to do the work, Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. right? So what do you do though with that person who is just belligerent on the other end and can't listen and it's just gonna be disrespectful? How do you help them even in that circumstance? You have to know yourself. You have to um, have a strong sense of who you are, what you need to do, and the level in which you need to do it. Mm -hmm. So when someone calls in and they're upset and they're angry and they start off with the, you know, the obscenities, mm -hmm. my first thing is to say, all right, we're going to conduct business. I'm going to help you get what you need, mm -hmm. but we're going to talk to each other the way we would want someone to talk to us. So we're going to take a moment. If you need a moment and you call me, you want to call me back, just know I'm going to be here at this desk. But we're going to we're going to mm -hmm. bring this to a level that I can help you because I can't help you if you yell and screaming and hollering. Right. I can't help you. <laughs> If you telling me about something that happened a year ago with someone else, right. I'm here today to meet you where you are and I'm going to talk to you the way you expect to be spoken to and we're going to work it out together. We're just going to work it out. As um, a leader within the organization, yes. um, how are you helping to sort of reduce some of that tension um, when you see that their caseload is getting heavier? So um, falling under that same umbrella, um, I have the um, ability to kind of pick and choose and help when I see an area that may be lacking. And one um, area that I really focus on is um, associate morale. And I try to be visible. I try to go visit the workers and, and just be a pleasant face. Um, I try to take the burden off of them. And I will ask, you know, what can I do to help? Um, initially, when I started, it was during the pandemic. And I honestly had no idea of their workloads, the numbers. And um, we had these sessions called listening sessions, where it's just a safe space to communicate, an open forum. And that's when I found out the numbers that they're dealing with. And I was just wowed. I couldn't believe that the caseload was this high. And I immediately went and I apologized because I felt like I was adding work to their plate because I do get um, complaints from the mayor's office, from the director's office, from RVA 311, and my goal is to solve them, not knowing the background of what they're working with. Right. So once I found out those numbers, my next step was to again go apologize and what can I do to help? So I changed my walk and how I approach the situations to try to lighten their load. We all have, you know, uh, uh, you know, outside lives. And when we leave work, some, some of us are taking work home mm -hmm. and you're thinking about that client right. who you might not, mm -hmm. did not do at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I promise you, I, I'm, I'm a supervisor and mm -hmm. I still, I'm, I consider myself still a worker mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I might have a title as a supervisor, but at the end of the day, I will jump in if I need to do a case, if I, um, 
can't, you know, finish a case because mm -hmm. a barrier is up. Um, say, I need pay stubs. I go that extra mile and I do email that client, but we only can work one case at a, at a time. We understand the frustration, um, uh, just the, the anger, you know, from right. some people. Right. Um, I, t I totally get it. If I if the shoe was on the other foot, I would probably be upset too. But at the end of the day, um, we know you're calling. We know you're sending emails. I promise you, we'll get to you. Everybody gets upset. Yeah. Everybody gets upset, especially when you feel like you've been calling and calling. You haven't gotten a mm -hmm. response mm -hmm. back. Please know you are not being ignored. I keep a list. Every message I take, my goal is to call back everyone who left the message. Now, if you leave me 20 messages, you're going to get one phone call, and my first words are going to be, Sugar, you left me 20 messages. Why you upset yourself like that? <laughs> and then we go from there. One of the things that I said in another conversation, and, and you brought it here, and I think we have to talk about that, is the fact that COVID affected you all. Sure. Yes. You lost colleagues. Sure. Colleagues lost family members. Mm -hmm. And so here you are being sort of the big hug for the community. Mm -hmm. Who's the big hug for you all? I've not found it. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> I, we uh, hug each we other. Hug each <laughs> other. <laughs> we hug each we other. Have to hug we each lean other. into each we other. We have to. And it's just passing through the hall sometimes yeah. or sticking your head in going, and she's famous for it. Hey, you okay? Yes. Yeah. We had to learn the big word, self-care. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> as an agency, because we just go, go, go. And sometimes you don't turn it off, because you, again, like, Ms., like you said, you just want to turn it off, mm -hmm. and you want to get it done, you want to take mm -hmm. care of customers. But at the end of the day, we have obligations as well. We're a lot like the people we serve. Mm -hmm. We have lives, we have people that we lost, um, families right. that we have to deal with, coworkers that have things going on as well. Mm -hmm. So we have to be trauma-informed, which is a lot of trainings that they've started for us as well. Mm -hmm. But to learn to step away, to get yeah. engulfed in things that you love, the hobbies you love, and reconnect with that once you're off and once you're done. Self-care is something that I practice daily. Um, my morning always starts with self-care. And it's a way to clear my mind and, and gives me the ability to refocus. Mm -hmm. And something else that I truly believe in is leaving yesterday in yesterday. Some things will always trickle over and, and that's the nature of the beast. But I try to start each day new because every day is going to be a different situation that presents right. itself that we have to handle. If you could say something to just our general public um, about maybe the giving grace a little bit, what would you want our public to know as, as they come in and interact with you? Um, what would you want them to know? Well, I would tell the public that we are here because of you. I mean, you are the ones that keep us employed. You keep us going. You help us to care for our families. So we appreciate you, first of all. But also that we're here to do a job and allow us to do that job to the best of our abilities. Everyone's case is special. We have to take certain time to do that case to make sure it's correct. No one's the same. And if we mess up just once, that can harm or affect that family. So we want to make sure we get it right the first time. So give us extended grace to do that and it understands the numbers are there, but social services globally, we always bounce back. And so we will always continue to grow and develop and we will get the staffing that we need. Just, just be gracious right now. You never know when life has a curveball for you. You right. know, you just, you just never know. Sometime in your journey, you're just walking along and you're, you're thinking this is the way things are supposed to be. But a lot of times it's never that way. Mm -hmm. And so my story is a little very simple. Um, I ain't going to say simple, but I'm going to simplify it. I graduated from college. Um, I became pregnant right after. I don't know if that was a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right after that. And, um, you know, I, I always knew about social services. And, mm -hmm. and I knew it was always a place that, you know, you get assistance, you get help. You know, I didn't know all the meat and potatoes of it, you know, but I just mm -hmm. knew in the course of my journey, that was a place that you get help. So at that time, I was in a space where I was very um, sad 
because, you know, I was disappointing my mom. Right. And, you know, I just really felt alone mm -hmm. and um, lost. Right. And so I went to social services and I'll never forget it was this lady there and she was at the keyboard and I was sitting over there at the table mm -hmm. and I was looking at her and I was just in a really dark place and I right. just wanted a hug mm -hmm. because I'm thinking this is where social service get to really fill you up with this. I'm going to take care of you. Right. You know? Right. And I'm like, well, you know, my mom is mad at me. I'm going to mm -hmm. let social services give me a hug. Right. And so I go on down there and I'm sitting at the table and this lady's on the other side. And she's, no, no, no feelings. Mm -hmm. No, um, just very, you know. Just going to do the job. Dry. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your name? <laughs> um, where you live? And I'm on the other side and I'm just like so down. Mm -hmm. And, um. I kind of toned out, mm -hmm. you know, she is like, I don't know if you guys experience like you're here, but you're not here, yes. but you're here, yeah, but you're absolutely. not here, mm -hmm. but you, you're here, you see her, but you're not focusing. Right. And at that time I kind of faded out and I just started talking to God. Mm hmm. And those conversations with Ooh, God girl. <laughs> yeah. will get you every time, oh, right? My, every time. Uh -huh. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so I started talking to God and I said, Lord, if you ever give me an opportunity to sit on the other side of that desk, yes. I'm going to be better than her. I think it's important for um, our viewers to understand that a case is not pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. That's just what you get on your desk. But those cases are human beings mm -hmm. who are connected mm -hmm. to other human beings. Exactly. And so the work that you do not just affects that one life, but all of those lives that that one human is connected to. Exactly. Um, and so is there that one case that changed you, but you know you changed that person or that family's life? Well, I can remember I had a family of six. Mm. a mother and a father, and at that time, three children, and she was pregnant with the fourth, became homeless. Mm. They were sleeping in their cars. Um, they would go, maybe stayed at a relative's house, and then a relative would say, well, you know what, time's right. up, you got to go. Yeah. Um, and I advocated very hard for that client, um, and she can attest to that. Um they finally were able to get into shelter. And um, as a result of getting into shelter, they are now in a place of their mm -hmm. home. They found stable housing. And so she called me last week to thank me for all, you know, the assistance that I provided um, for her and her family. And so now they are family stable. So that really touched my, you know, to show that I, you know, could make a difference. No one comes in with a dream that they want to be on assistance right. for the rest of their life. Right. Okay, I haven't met those people. They, they're coming in there, they have goals, they have ambitions, they have dreams and desires, and I want to help them get there. So child care is the assistance that allows you to do that. When people say, I can't find a job because, you know, I've got my children are at home. No, 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 no. We can do something about that. And so I can't say one success story because I have too many. And we don't have enough time for my <laughs> success stories. And I think that's what I keep hearing when I talk to each one of you all <laughs> is the fact that no matter how hard it has gotten or how hard it has been, it's the fact that you know that every day you're touching at least one person's life and changing it. How do you say that to the 18 year old coming out of high school or the, the new college graduate, and they want to be in public service, but they're not sure what they want to do. How would you encourage them to come and, and check out social service? So the first thing I would want them to know is that there are a multitude of avenues mm -hmm. within social services. Um, when I started with social services, I started out in CPS and I moved from CPS into child care. And then from child care, um, I then moved into VIEW, which is the current position that I hold. So there were several moves just trying to find the place that fit me mm -hmm. best and what in the way that I would like to interact with um, my customers, really. Um, 
So that that would be the first thing that I would let them know is there there are many avenues to explore under this one um, umbrella right. under social yes. services. When you get to the point um, that you are in a place that you no longer need services, um, that is absolutely the goal of the program, not for you to be on it an extended amount of time um, through a lifetime. Um, we have some some clients that do, they need it. They mm -hmm. absolutely need it. But when a client does come through the door and they say, or they call or email and say, hey, I no longer need Medicaid. I no longer need my SNAP benefits. That is the goal at the end of the day for the agency to have, we're helping you, you know, get to that goal of, okay, I can now manage my household. I can right. manage my bills. Um, I have insurance through my employer for me or my children. Um, so that is a gratifying, like, feeling to absolutely have a client call you in and, and tell you that. Economic support and independence. And I love that because what that means is I'm going to help support you until you are independent. And that's yes, very important when yes, it it people need to know that oh, yeah. and they need to feel that and they need to embrace that. I'm in the child care division and it is exactly what it sounds like. If your baby needs to go to daycare, I'm the person for you. Okay. So you can get independent. So tell us about, you know, sort of the, the ease of use, right? So what are the things that residents need um, when they come in to meet with you? Well, to meet, uh, when, when they're dropping off their renewal interim, Medicaid renewals, uh, we ask that you please sign it um, because it is not going to be a valid application if you do not do not sign it. Make sure you have your pay stubs. If you are no longer working, please, please provide a statement from your employer yeah. stating your last date of employment. If your rent or lease um Agreement has changed. Please provide that. Um, any, you know, new children, anyone that's moved in or out of the home, that will make our jobs um, much, much, much easier when processing your SNAP renewals, interims, and Medicaid renewals. Social services across our nation is experiencing some hardships, right? Um, COVID has um, rendered us into a place where caseloads are high, um, response times are not as fast as they used to be, and our employees are feeling all of that. They grappled with loss of life themselves, they feared COVID themselves, but yet they're the warm hug around all of our Richmonders. Um, and so Richmond is not different than Atlanta or New York or anywhere else that's experiencing this. Um, and so I wanna talk about um, your staff. Um, being around them, they are just warmth personified. And we haven't seen those human faces in a lot of the stories that we, we talk about. We have seen caseloads high and pushing papers and numbers, but it's more than pushing papers and caseloads and numbers. It's human beings who are out here on the front lines helping other human beings. So Shonda, as the director, Talk about what that is like for you to lead one, this extraordinary group of men and women who give of themselves daily and don't really ask for much. Wow, that to make me cry. <laughs> um, today literally is the eighth year that I've been in this role. Wow. With that said, I've been working with them 17 years prior to that. I was the attorney for social services. So I literally grew up mm. around some of the most amazing people. Um, and what I'll share is my personal experience okay. in being a recipient of that warm hug of the group of folks that I lead. Um, about two months into me starting this role, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Um, and a few months after that, I was told, we were told um, that she had six months left wow. to live. Um, and I was thinking about that this morning and she passed away October of 2016. Um, but you value time very differently mm -hmm. when you're told um, that your mom has six months left to yes. live, like literally every moment matters. Um, and I was looking back over this time, I could not imagine working in a different place, space, with anybody else other than those at the Richmond Department of Social Services. When I say they wrapped me in a warm hug, 
they wrapped me in a warm hug despite all the difficulties. Um, as hard as that was, you know, I was the child that helped with the medical appointments. That meant, you know, long days at work and spending the night at, a ho at the hospital and getting back up and being back in the office again. And I can tell you the amount of support, mm -hmm. kindness, nurturing, right. um, and grace mm -hmm. that they give, that allows you to navigate that space that pulls out really um, the desire to serve even more in you. Um, and I was thinking about, wow, this has been eight years. And if I'm looking from the perspective of what time means to me, despite the good moments, the bad moments, the horrible moments, there is not a moment I regret because of the people I get to serve in this space with. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and Reggie, as the DCAO right. um, that gets to connect with not just Shonda, but with her entire staff, what is it like for you to be that leader and know how hard they're working every day to make sure that the least of these in Richmond have that warm hug and are cared for, even sometimes at the cost of themselves. Sure. Well, first, I'm so glad Shonda is in this leadership role, and congratulations on eight years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in this role as DCAO for three plus years, uh, and I know firsthand that it requires people with integrity and compassion to guide hundreds of folks who are interfacing with individuals daily who might be facing the most traumatic and trying times in their lives. Right. So Shunda's right. You have to have people who have um, every day are able to get up and face whatever's gonna come their way, recognizing they might have their own struggles. Right. But were we not there and were we not, do not have leaders that can help them be prepared to address those challenges, it would be complete chaos. Right. Um, but competent, professional people who are trauma-informed mm -hmm. uh, and care, that's clear. And as the DCAO, when we talked about essential workers, before the pandemic, these were essential right. people, <laughs> <laughs> essential to the life and livelihood and success of thousands and thousands of families. And that takes a special kind of individual to, to even want to yeah. do this work. And we talk, we talk about this, this is human services right. mm -hmm. in every true sense of the word. There are so many different things mm -hmm. that you could learn at Richmond Social Services um, that I just challenge you to try it out. It's an amazing career. Again, I started my career here in one way ended my legal career representing Richmond Social Services and have had the opportunity to learn so much in this role. Um, I've always said that the one career pathway that I did not see that was clearly laid out was that of director. Mm -hmm. um, and Richmond Social Services has produced three directors around the Commonwealth from our public assistance in three different or multiple localities actually they've gone to. Mm -hmm. So I know the caliber of training and professional development um, that we provide and the caliber of staff that come to this place. We produce directors. And so I want us to sort of talk through where we are today. You know, COVID came in 2020 and it knocked us all for a loop. Um, it changed people's caseloads from if you were, you know, on one side of the house, you might have had 20 cases that you were working to 65 cases, right? Um, it meant that you've got more applications coming in and more people needing TANF and SNAP and Medicaid and all of those things, but you still have the same amount of people. And so what are we doing to tackle that in a real way? And not just for the public side, but the internal side. Um, one of the things that happened for all of us in the pandemic is that we faced our own mortality and that decision of how do we want to oh, spend yes you know, the vast majority of our day Absolutely. can be at work. Mm -hmm. What do I want to be doing and is that meaningful for me? Right. And when you're feeling the weight right. of an increased caseload, um, and I will tell you in working with my staff, when they share, they're not sharing about this is just a caseload. It's Miss Giles, this is a person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. right. And exactly. I need to get to this person. It's mm -hmm. never about the volume in that is just 
weighty. It's I can't get to the need. Right. What they see is the need. Um, and I'm sure I have no doubt hearing we're working on it. We're working on it. We're trying to do it, but not seeing that change right. immediately. It's yeah. not like you we did with the salaries mm -hmm. where it's one of those um, and suddenly moments. Right. This really is a process. Right. Um, with that said, we've come to the other side of that process. So we're actually advertising for about 46 part-time positions. Oh, that is awesome. That is great. So that is awesome. We've recognized mm -hmm. that that's a space that people have leaned into that they did not before mm -hmm. pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, there's more interest in that. Um, we are doing more teleworking. Okay. Um, that for us has been an amazing asset. And the other part of that is we're advertising for some entry level positions. So I'm actually excited that we get to be the beginning yes. of someone's career in this human service, servant leadership space. How has what Shonda is doing sort of within her department yeah. sort of spilled out over into oh, sure. the whole portfolio? Uh, when Shonda mentioned her team feeling more, um, having the capacity to tell the truth and be mm -hmm. honest and authentic, that's key. And so I hope that's permeating the entire portfolio right. <laughs> because we are, like I mentioned, we're human services, but we interface with the public every, every day. single day. So people need to be able to tell leadership, mm -hmm. this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm hearing from the mm -hmm. public. So if need be, we can make adjustments, modifications, mm -hmm. but most importantly, let the employees and staff know that we know you're our most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. If someone says, I had a problem with the city. They're not talking about me, Shonda, or me, or you. Right. They're talking about that person in social services or in justice services or in parks and rec that interact with me today. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that we can help all of our team members appreciate their value and yes. power right. with regard to telling the Richmond story yeah. and letting us, and letting them know they can trust us to tell us the truth mm -hmm. about what you're seeing and feeling, that's how we grow. We're, we're trying to be constant learners too because I don't have all the answers. And, I, and our team has more information than we might have on any given day. Right. And I think based on what Shonda's learning and sharing with me, we're learning how to be really open and receptive to that. And, and there's no harm. And right. I think sometimes people feel like um, they have to whisper, they used to, mm -hmm. yeah. whisper behind closed doors. No, right. no, right. This, is, this is about literal life and death. Right. And we have to trust each other to, to give it our best and trust that leadership respects you. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. One, just for the work that you do. Um, because at the end of the day, you can't do this. Right. Um, not everybody can do this. Mm -hmm. um, this work is for people with some good intestinal fortitude. Sure. Right? Yes. Um, and you are meeting our most neediest. Yes. At their most desperate mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And and I want I want our viewers to understand that. Um, these are not numbers, these are not papers, mm -hmm. these are people. Yes. And these are not paper pushers, these are people who are trying to help other people sure. navigate some of the, the, the hardest parts of their lives. Sure. You know, when you start thinking about parents who need childcare because they need to go to work, mm -hmm. these are not people who want to be on assistance, these are people who need to be on assistance sure. sort of to get that leg up. Sure. Um, and I love the fact that it's about getting them to being independent. Yeah. So thank you for that work. And whenever you need a hug, just come find me. I got Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I got Absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you, lady, thank you. so much. Thank you. It's all about having a heart for service. Every conversation today, that was the common theme. We have a heart for service. Come see us over here at the Richmond Department of Social Services. Thank you for joining us. I'm Fatua Burks. Until next time. Rock TV.